keeps on preparing to make sure your every breath is safe. We look forward to seeing you again. When the world comes to a halt, Taiwan keeps on preparing to make sure your every breath is safe. We look forward to seeing you again. When the world comes to a halt, Taiwan keeps on preparing to make sure your every breath is safe. We look forward to seeing you again. We start. I'd like to invite the Bichiruda. Yeah, please uh, enable start sharing video. Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hello. Hello. 
Good evening, Fernando. Good evening. I, I think and you need to release the camera. The camera is uh, stopped by the host for the VT Healthcare. Yes. We cannot enable yeah. the, the video. Yeah. You cannot open the video. So I'm also. I'm also. Yes, because they is blocked. Video. Yes, in VT Healthcare. Is VT Healthcare is blocked the video? Okay. Yes. They are doing, they are doing. Okay. Okay, you can check. Okay, okay. Okay. okay, good. Okay, in fact, to be Chiluna. Yes. Okay, starting now. Can I start now? Yes, you sure. Yes, you can start. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Good evening and hi everyone. This is CPD Asia. We are on the fourth online continuing professional development platform for Asian Radiologic Technologists Societies. Hosting this event is the Taiwan Association of Medical Radiation Technologists. And in helping us organize the Asian CPD, all member societies are grateful to VT Healthcare Vietnam and their Vietnam. To formally start the program, please welcome the Taiwan Association of Medical Radiation Technologists, TAMRT President, Shu Wan Yu Wan Tzu, for the opening remarks. Okay, thank you. President Shubiato, President Go, President Kim Muti, President Panares, President Tai, President Sophia Lai, and President Wing. Uh, invited to speak, ladies and gentlemen, good day. Uh, it's a glorious moment to extend my warm wishes. On behalf of the TMRT, I want to convey my heartfelt uh, gratitude to all society for intervening TMRT to participate in Asia CPD. Uh, it's an opportune, opportune moment to uh, refurbish and uh, debate up on the current problems in radiology field by sharing our research and the clinical experience through this platform. Uh, before we begin this seminar, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you uh, who sincerely committed uh, to this event to make it a success. Uh, this event would have been uh, impossible without the support uh, of each and uh, everyone present here. Thank you. Peggy, please open your microphone. Thank you so much again, President of TAMRT, uh, President uh, Chun Yu Wan Tzu. Ladies and gentlemen, participating also with us tonight are the presidents of the different RT societies and associations. Let me start to greet uh, the, the first, the host of the first CPD Asia, Macau Radiological Technologist Association's MRTA, President Fernando Koch. Hello, good evening, everyone. The second host of the Asia CPD Indonesian Society of Radiographers, <laughs> also known as PARI, President Giek Sugianto. Hello, uh, good evening, everyone. Hello. We also have a president of the Vietnam Association of Radiological Technologists, President Sai Van Lo. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. We also have tonight the Cambodian Radiological Technologist, ACRT President Sophie Lee. Hello, everyone. Hello. And the president of Hong Kong Radiographers Association, HKRA, President Wan Shu Boon Nelson. Hi, everyone. Or Sir Rolando Banares, I am Pichi Luna, also your MC tonight. This fourth CPD Asia, hosted by the TAMRT, has prepared for us three expert speakers. Let us now start to experience sharing of medical imaging, development, and clinical practice in Taiwan. 
please welcome the CPD Asia TAMRT program moderator, Mr. Cheng Wei Li. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. So uh, my name is uh, Chen Hui Li. I come from Taiwan Association of Medical Radiology Technologists. So um, today I am honored to be the host of tonight's meeting. Um, in order to make today's uh, meeting go smoothly, uh, each speaker has uh, 50 minutes to present and after all speak finished, their presentation, then we will have 30 minutes for your question. So maybe we can uh, start uh, to the tonight's, uh, tonight's presentation. Now, um, let's, uh, uh, let's work on the first speak of this uh, section, TAMRT uh, Yu Shen Ling. Uh, he come from Chimei Hospital the Department of the Radiological Diagnosis. Today, um, she, he will share a clinical experience of MR imaging technique. And uh, his topic is MR endography in Chrome disease, uh, preparation and uh, excitation. So maybe we can begin. We can start the, today's presentation. Hello. Hello. Hello everyone, good morning and good evening. Dear distinguished guide and officer, I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. Is everyone ready? It's about time to start this presentation because it looks like just about time, so let's get started. Before we get started on this presentation, allow me to briefly introduce myself. I'm a technicist with radiology in Qime Medical Center. And I come from China, Taiwan. As you can tell, English is my second language. So I'd appreciate your patience with my not so perfect English. As you know, the reason we are here today is to discuss how to preparation and expectation in my entrography. When we went to application in Chrome disease, I'd like my talk in two, three parts. The first part, I will start off my course of Crohn disease. In the second part, I will then go to talk about when we start and duration this program, how we can do for patient or ourselves. And in the final part, I will give you about this program contraindication and discussion. So in the United States, the number of people suffering from Crohn's disease increase each year, both in children and adults, which will also result in a newer cost of 56.3 billion. And on this chart, you can also see that in the world, because of the quality of living environment and economic progress, resulting in increase in the number of people sick year by year. In general, the inflammatory blood disease in complex to idiopathic chronic and inflammatory disease, and they will be divided two parts. The first part is Crohn disease, and the second part is ulcerative colitis. It's worth mentioning Crohn disease and ulcerative colitis are disorder of unknown cause, involving genetic and immunological influence in the gastrointestinal tract's ability to distinguish foreign from self-antigen. However, 
important pathology and clinical difference that distinguish this inflammatory disease process. In clinical, Crohn's disease tends to present more frequently with abdominal pain and perinatal disease, where ulcerative colitis is more often characterized by gastrointestinal bleeding. Couple stony mucosa and ulcers or linear ulcer colitis the endoscope appearance of Crohn's disease. Ulcerative colitis present with diffuse continuous involvement of the mucosa. Radio study of the patient with Crohn's disease catalyzed show fistula and symmetry and ileal involvement. In contrast, radio study of the patient with ulcerative colitis show continuous disease without fistulin or ileal disease. Pathologically, Crohn's disease future mucosa discontinuous transmural involvement and granulomas where ulcerative colitis does not. Especially, cryopsis and granulomas are present only in Crohn's disease. Just mentioning in the last slide, there is a similarity between inflammatory bowel disease in addition to about this question. We can also distinguish from where. In general, cobblestone and shooter probably can usually be seen in the colorectal scope. Here we can see the intestinal world is smooth relative to normal colorectal ulcerative colitis. So overlap, they share many overlap. Few tick colitis, such as arthritis, eye disorders, skin problems, kidney and liver disease. In some patients, it is not possible to distinguish which form of inflammatory bowel disease in some prison. Because of this, we usually arrange some medical program for undiagnosed patients and we want to check their blood test, blood pressure body temperature and respiratory rate and body weight to rule out whether it is just a common abdominal disease. However, even we can usually use the physical examination in the first place to confirm that the patient is suffering from Crohn's disease. It's life fecal corporatin, but we all know that the medical diagnosis are not diagnosed by a single test. An endoscopy such as esophageal gastrointestinoscope and idiocolonoscope do not fully observe the entire small intestine and it is easy to overrule the distal idiom and submucosa layer and messenger region. What's more interesting here is that the detection rate of the fecal coprotein can be almost confirmed but not certain because there is no perfect test tool in the world and can only be verified continuously. In general, Crohn's disease usually have the colitis of skin region and are prone to disease at the terminal. And it can pass in the intestine, repeat tube or crack the frag organ outside in the intestine. For some patients with Crohn's disease, it can produce some symptoms such as eye, blood system, and joint. Before the appearance of gastrointestinal symptoms, so the history of some patients before the diagnosis, imaging explanation is really important because those results can provide some important information to support our diagnosis and it can also confirm the severity and activity of the Crohn's disease. So in this slide, we want to show you guys, you can see in the past, two systematic review papers have reporting later sensitivity and specificity of MRE or CT to Crohn disease are nearly 90% in each layer. In making imagery program is so indispensable.
So before we need to start an examination, how do we do? The first step, patient will ask to follow a four day residual free diet and four hour fast before the examination. We will give in a hyperosmotic oral across the solution. Over a period, if for the 40 minutes to 60 minutes. In the meantime, if the patient is about to work, we hope the patient can move a little bit, forcing the gastrointestinal tract to move so that the portion can feel the entire intestinal more. When time arrival or the patient want to go to the toilet, we can get the patient into the examination room. During the patient were in a prone position. And if the patient have any contraindicated, we were usually given a body weight based dose of bascopan. And it were administered intravenously before the contrast agent to obtain blood relaxation or peristalsis reduction. In here, I would like to make sure that the portion is filled in the intestine before we give it a bascopan. Patient at the recommend dose of 0 0.1 milliliter per kilogram, followed by a starting flush. When we finish this program, we usually educate patients about healthy advocacy. It is easy to go to the toilet within two to three days of completing the abdominal starting sharp pain, please back to the hospital and hand up images and info that the intro growth has been performed. We use the protocol provided in the it to become our standard protocol. Imagery acquisition is obtained with cervical sequence. A more intro growth imagery protocol very significant due to different in requirement and personal experience. However, certain basic elements are common to most control disease imagery protocol. First sequence capable if acquisition T1 weighting and T2 weighting imagery in a single brief hole are crucial for obtaining diagnostic imagery and reduction if the artifact. In all practice, we use the 1.5 Tesla magnet to equip it with a phase array F element coil with a uh, following sequence. In here, we want to share some acute imagery for your reference. We like we just start with the authority and the intestinal wall thickening. By far, the most serious of the patient we examination were imagery for star sign. It is mainly connected by multiple benign feet from tubal straining. In all conclusion, we'd like to remind you again. This program is not recommended when the patient intestinal are broad or narrow or has a dysphagic disorder. As highly permeable oral medication can force the patient to develop acute abdominal pain and intestinal necrosis. In addition, this program is a much needed patient related test within an MI especially between acute and not acute patient. So in this program, how we can expectation in the future? Actually, we let patient drink about two liters of high osmetic solution before the examination. But usually these patients are like to rather younger and usually petite in size. So in all experience, Maybe some patient can do the test by drink only one lit solution. So maybe in the future, we can measure how much medicine or patient should drink by weight or size. So this is my uh, short term topic. 
thank you for your attention. Thank you. Hello. Okay, thank you for uh, Mr. Ling's uh, presentation. Uh, now, uh, let's turn to learn the next speaker. Okay, um, artificial intelligence uh, technique has become a very important uh, part of a medical imagery in the past few years. And with the addition of operative uh, subway, so we can greatly increase the diagnosis and accuracy of clinical disease. The next big uh, TAMRT and Tao Xiang come from Taipei, Taipei Medical University Hospital Department of Radiologic Diagnosis. And he will bring us uh, the experience of the artificial intelligence subway used for brain imaging. And his topic is uh, validation of the occurrence of rapid artificial intelligence software in detecting of large vessel occlusion in patients with acute ischemical shock. Hello, everyone. I'm Chen Chaoxiang, a radiographer in the Department of Image Medicine at Taipei Medical University Hospital. I would like to give you a presentation about the research I'm working on currently, validating the accuracy of rapid artificial intelligence in detecting vascular obstruction in patients with acute ischemic stroke. In this research, a validating study was performed in Taipei Medical University Hospital to evaluate the accuracy of rapid artificial intelligence software in identifying the location of large vessel occlusion. In Taiwan, cerebral vascular disease rank as fourth of the top 10 causes of death and the stroke constitute the majority of them. There are two types of stroke, ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke. Ischemic stroke is caused by blockage of an artery, and about 70% of stroke are ischemic. Hemorrhagic stroke are stroke that caused by bleeding, and about 30% of stroke are hemorrhagic. There are two treatments for acute ischemic stroke, RTPA and IAT. When a patient with suspected stroke is taken to the emergency room, a non-enhanced brain CT will be performed. If LOVO is highly suspected, the patient will further have a CT angiography and CT perfusion studies. In TMUH, when we finish all the exams, all the images will be uploaded to a rapid server for further analysis. And you may be wondering, what are the functions of rapid AI systems? Rapid has three major functions, rapid aspects, rapid city perfusion, and rapid LVO detection. Let me introduce these functions separately in the next few slides. Aspects can automatically identify regions of the brain and generate score to help physicians quickly assess patient ability for thrombectomy. Aspects will rate on a score of no brands of 10. The lower score indicated the worst case. Rapid CTP is computer tomography perfusion, which used the blood flow wash in and wash out to assess the survival of brain cells. It can calculate the blood flow automatically to assess the viability of ischemic brain tissue. The third function, rapid LVO detection, 
CTA and LVO is also the subject of my study. It will automatically process CT scan and deliver clear, easy to interpret 3D CT images for rapid identification of suspect LVO. And it can also process hundreds of CTA images in a short time as well. The previous two functions of Raptor Aspects and Raptor CTP have been proven useful in many studies. Now, in my study, I would like to validate the accuracy of Raptor artificial intelligence software in detecting of large vessel occlusion in patients with acute ischemic stroke. In this study, we collected the CT image of 155 acute stroke patients from our hospital and uploaded them to Raptor server for analysis. 145 of them were successfully processed by the Raptor system, and the data were further statistically analyzed. The software I used for statistical analysis was IBM SPSS Statistic 25. Sensitivity and specificity are the most commonly used measure of detection accuracy. Here you can see the formula for sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity is calculated as the number of diseases that are correctly classified, divided by all diseased individuals. Specificity measures the proportion of negatives that are correctly identified. In simple terms, sensitivity and specificity are measures of a test ability to correctly classify a person as having a disease or not having a disease. Basically, when we have higher sensitivity, the less LVO we missed. When we have higher specificity, the less misdiagnosis we got. This table shows the results of rapid after analyzing the CTA images. In these 145 cases, 47 cases with no LVO have been identified by rapid software. 68 cases with LVO have been identified by Raptor as well. The sensitivity was calculated as 0.85. The specificity is 0.723. False positive is 0.277. And false negative is 0.15. Apart from sensitivity and specificity, we also performed the ROC and the AUC. The ROC curve describes the overall performance of the diagnostic modality across varying conditions. ROC analyze allow one to average the effect of different conditions on accuracy. Therefore, the area under the ROC curve can be viewed as the diagnostic accuracy of the technology. For ROC curve, the more the curve close to the vertical axis is true positive, the result is better. The AUC represents the area under the ROC curve. The more the value close to 1, the accuracy is better. When AUC equals 0 0.5, it has no discriminative power. AUC between 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 
is acceptable. AUC higher than 0 0.A means excellent discriminative power. This is the analyzed result of the 145 cases. For access and its AUC value was 0 0.787. However, it is found that Raptor is actually have some limitations and will cause the image cannot be successfully analyzed by Raptor for extracranial vascular obstruction. Cases of poorly enhanced quality and obstruction in posterior circulation. For example, spinal arteries, basilar arteries, posterior cerebral arteries. In addition, severe stenosis and obstruction will both be considered as LVO. Therefore, we have further excluded totally 65 cases, which with such conditions we just mentioned from our original cohort, and 90 cases were left. Then, these 90 cases perform the analysis of sensitivity and the specificity, ROC as well. In these 90 cases, 26 cases with no LVO have corrected, identified by Raptor software, and 59 cases with LVO have corrected, identified by two. This table shows the result of Raptor. After analyzing the 90 cases CTA images, the sensitivity of 0 0.983, specificity of 0 0.867, false positive of 0 0.133 and false negative of 0 0.17 were calculated. And the ROC curve and the AUC were also performed. ROC curve become closer to the vertical axis means true positive with an AUC value of 0 0.925. A statistical analysis of the screening 90 cases showed a sensitivity of 0 0.983 and a specificity of 0 0.867. And the AUC was 0 0.925, which is higher than previous data. We also noted that even for the original 145 cases that were not pre-screening according to the restriction of rapid system, the detection power still achieved a sensitivity of 0 0.85 and a specificity of 0 0.723 with low false positive and low false negative rates. And the overall AUC is 0 0.787. Although Raptor is not perfect, its interpretation can provide a good reference for radiologists and stroke team in a very short time. And it has a certain potential and value of being an important support tool in clinical. In the future, we will continue to collect more cases for analysis 
to increase our sample size. And we will compare the efficacy between senior and junior radiologists with rapid assistance. Thank you for your attention. Okay, now thanks uh, for Mr. Chen's uh, presentation. Now uh, let's turn to the, the last uh, speaker tonight. So tonight's uh, last speaker uh, is Xin Yu, come from TATMRT. Uh, uh, she is a Taiwanese diagnostic radiographer who is uh, uh, specialized in medical imaging pulsing. And today she will bring us some review information in MR imaging combined with uh, neural network techniques. Uh, the topic of this, uh, of this presentation is a review of a uh, conventional uh, neural network on post-state cancer detection using MRI. Hello everyone, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. My name is Xingyu Zhen and I'm a certified radiographer in both Taiwan and Singapore. And in today's presentations, um, I was thinking it would be quite interesting if I can share a literature review that I did and when I was studying my master's degree back in Scotland last year under my supervisor, Dr. Chongwei's supervisions. So I hope you enjoyed this presentations and I hope you can learn something from this. So that's jumping to the presentation. The title of the presentation is a review of convolutional neural networks on prostate cancer detections using MRI. So this is my outline. I will go through the introductions, background of AI, comparisons of past studies, discussions, and the conclusion. So I'll cover the problem needs to be solved here and the end of this review. So the problem here, as you can see right here, I acquired this bar trust from World Health Organizations. And this is the estimate age standardized incident and mortality rates worldwide in 2018. And prostate cancer here has the second large amount of uh, people have it uh, in this data. Um, however, the mortality rate is relatively low um, compared to other types of cancer which means that people have prostate cancer usually have better survival rate. That means the early detections is, uh, early diagnosis is kind of important. Um, but in other cancer, other types of cancer, we normally suggest patients to do the screening and to be able to have the early diagnosis. However, in prostate cancer, it's a very different story because there's a ton of call over diagnosis or over treatment. Okay, so uh, to avoid this, Normally, the clinician won't really suggest patients to do the screening. That means patients usually needs to have, or they suggest they 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 suspect they have prostate cancer, and they reach out to the doctor and ask him to do the check for them. So, and they normally go through this. Uh, doctors will ask ask about their patient family history, um, PSA testing. They would ask them to do a PSA testing, which is the prostate specific specific antigen and uh, digital rectal examinations. And after that, if they are um, suspect to have prostate cancer, they normally will be suggested to do the pre-biopsy MRI. Um, the reason why um, they are suggested to have the pre-biopsy MRI is because biopsy is an invasive um, examination. So if we can use a non-invasive um, way to see uh, if the patients have cancer or not, that can probably prevent some patients who don't really have cancer to do the biopsy. So yeah, the pre-biopsy MI is usually uh, read by, or it is read by um, experienced radiologists. And they're following, following this guideline, a prostate image for reportings and data system, in short, pirates. And at this stage, and the benign and malignant lesions will be separated or will be understood at this stage. And the end of this study is like we want to know if uh, I want to know if the artificial intelligence can be used in prostate cancer detection using pre-biopsy MI. 
and secondly, compare the past studies of breast cancer using AI and especially for the convolutional neural network models. And as a radiographer, uh, I want to introduce this to you guys. So um, what is AI? So I, I do believe that um, you can probably see artificial intelligence in many places, okay? But what exactly it is? The original meanings of artificial intelligence AI is just simply describing using computer science uh, for doing tasks for human beings. However, recent, in recent years, normally when it comes to AI technology, there is a technique called machine learning usually involved. Um, so in machine learning, it means that the machines or the things that you build usually have the process of learning in order to do the task for you. And within this machine learning, there are many types of machine learning. And uh, the things that we, we are going to talk about with the convolutional neural network is part of deep learning. And yeah, in, in within this machine learning terms, there are different types of way, uh, different ways of learning. For example, supervised learning, semi-supervised learning, and supervised learning, and transfer learning. And usually medical supervised learning will be used a lot because it usually have better accuracy, usually. So this is the basic concept of machine learning. I won't go through everything because that might take me more than 10 hours to explain everything, but I'll just briefly go through the basic, basic one, okay? Um, so that says, what is machine learning? So machine learning in short is to find the functions represent the process from input to target. Okay, so that's say the input is here, the cat that I drew. Okay, and the target is the cat, C-A-T, the word cat. So uh, the C-A-T, this word is actually not meaningful for machine, but it's meaningful for human beings. So we want to look for the, the relationship between the pictures of cats and the word C-A-T. And when we look for this function to represent this, that called machine learning, if that makes sense. The truth is, it is involving lots of math. Okay, so uh, I'll just briefly introduce some of them. Remember the cats and the, the picture of cats and the word cats? Sometimes their relationship might not be linear, so we will have the activation functions here to describe if it's not linear, we will use activation functions here to uh, make it close to the targets that we want to describe. And the whole thing, we call it logistic regressions. However, it only describes one element. What if we have many types of elements? So um, there will be a different story, okay? Um, but it, this is just the basic, basic one. And once we know the functions of it, uh, we want to know that how's the difference between the, the targets and the input. Uh, be, by that, I mean uh, the predictions and the target that we want to know. So uh, there is there are two terms, loss functions and cost functions here to describe how difference between the things that the machine predicts and the real answer of it, if that makes sense. Uh, so the, the number comes out, we'll call it the um, arrow. So for this arrow, we want to reduce the arrow because we, we don't really want to make uh, the predictions and the real answer too far apart, right? So um, we want to make the arrow lesser, okay? So this process is called gradient descent. Okay, so if you are an expert of machine learning, please bear with me because this is the most basic one and I know there are a lot more uh, different types of math methods to do so, but I'll just introduce the most common one. And uh, when it comes to more complicated, for example, many layers, um, there's uh, the way called back propagations is usually being used. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Right, so uh, the AI to prostate cancer have, can be implemented in many area, for example, pathology, MI images, and multimodalities. But here, I only focus on uh, MR images classifications. And especially, and this is just because I'm a radiographer. I'm interested in this. Um, but yeah, in this research in 2018, in this research, it compares to the traditional machine learning SPN to the uh, CNN, which, which is what we are going to discuss 
today. Um, so as you can see, the tr traditional ones and the CNN, uh, CNN has the better accuracy uh, sensitivities and specificity. So that's the reason why I chose um, convolutional neural network here. So what exactly is convolutional neural network? So it mainly involving three steps. First off, the convolution. Second, polling. And lastly, the Fourier connections. So as you can see right here, and you can probably see there's a three by three um, filter. It will go through the whole pictures of it and do the convolution. And will then produce a new pictures of it. And it will come through these steps, which is called pulling. And as you can see, there's a two by two um, matrix right here. And pulling, the usual, the, the mostly used one is max pulling, which means that within this four pixels, the maximum amount of it will be recourse to the matrix that we sense. And lastly, it will be the fully connection. This stage just now, the matrix will be pulled to a vector. Okay, a vector right here. This is how the CN looks like. So sometimes the, the convolution uh, pullings and fully connection can be repeated many times. And it really depends on what kind of architectures that the researchers use. And that's how the research goes because they want to find the best architectures to tackle the problem. So uh, the procedures of building machine learning is usually looks like this. Data acquirement, uh, image preprocessing and training model, which CNN that we discuss here and model evaluations. So this is the data acquirement. Uh, they usually use, uh, most of them use 3T uh, MI scanner, but some of them want two, three, uh, two of them uh, mixing two types of scanner and one using only 1.5T Tesla uh, MI scanner. And uh, in both this research, it says they say that uh, mixing the 1.5 T's and 3 T's images won't be a problem. Yeah, they list it out. They say it in their um, paper. Um, and the image types uh, mostly they use uh, DW, uh, DWI and ADC. Yeah, and uh, data size the maximum data size here is 427. I calculate it by patients. Okay, normally we won't really calculate calculate this by patients, especially when it comes to AI. Uh, but yeah, I think it's the better way to quantify it here because you know, I'm comparing many research eleven papers, so I think it will be quite easy. It's it will be easier to compare by patients. So the maximum uh, numbers of patients here is four hundred twenty seven, a minimum is only. 23, uh, which means that um, they have to maximize their usage of their data. So they use this cross validations um, to try to maximize the usage of data. It just like um, separates the data set to many portions and it will just choose one of them as a validation data and the rest of them are training data. And here, it, as you can see, the, the blue bar separates to 10 small parts, and each of them will become a valid at least 10 times. Yeah, if that makes sense. So it will maximize the usage of the data. And the preprocessing here, uh, uh, I, I listed denoising, feature scaling, segmentations, and registrations. I'm pretty sure most of the radiographers know this. And it is quite surprising. At least I'm. I'm. I was quite surprising that denoising wasn't a choice for them to use. However, after I thinking a bit, I think the, the con convolutional part is pretty similar to the denoising. That's the reason. That kind of explains why they don't really use denoising here. Um, feature scaling. Yeah, they mostly use uh, image normalizations and segmentations. Uh, most of them use ROI crop which is like they, they, they roll the code and to crop the image for them. And two of these study use manual segmentation. That's quite interesting. Um, 
and registration, like most of them, some of them, most of them use the registrations as well. So that's how it works. Okay, so um, lastly, the trending models and results. Uh, image augmentations, it means that uh, it will change the form of the image, but not changing the label. Um, so most of them use it, and it will make the machine be able to train more images. And the architectures here, uh, you probably see some scary tons here, but they are mostly the variations of convolutional neural network. Um, it can be the size of the convolution. Just now, the, the GIF that I made was three by three, but sometimes they will use it, for example, uh, four by four or, may, or even more. Yeah, so that's that's how different the architectures they use. They probably use automated. And the results here are quite interesting. Most of them are pretty high. They can go up to, for example, here at AUC, um, here AUC 0.87 and 0.87 and 0. even 0 0.944. And the accuracy can go up to 97.5%, which is really high. Yeah. So the advantages of AIs on Prasikenza diagnosis are here. Uh, achieves a good results with a small environment of patient data. You get an instant result. It can run 24 hours give the consistency result because it's machine and it's cost effective. So once you made it, you can just use it forever. And however, there is some such, there are some potential problems of uh, CNN models on prostate cancer diagnosis. First off, not enough data for, not, not enough study for prostate cancer grading. So just now those 11 studies, only one, only two of them uh, made the, the grading and most of them not really, uh, do the not really did the grading parts. They only uh, they only classify the malignants and benign lesions. And uh, secondly, not enough patient data for training grading prediction model, which is kind of true as well because uh, you, we don't really have enough data to train the grading prediction model. That means that we don't really have enough study for it. And thirdly, overfitting is not discussed in the past study. So uh, we can see the accuracies are pretty high, but none of them mentions about overfitting. Have they tested? None of them mentioned that. And the fourth, the, um, the decisions are difficult to explain. So normally radiologists being able to explain to you why they think it's a lesion, but the machine can't do it. And, but recently in, in the artificial intelligence area, there is a, there's a technique called great camp. They be able to visualize the the decisions that or the, the things that convolutional neural network is looking at. So that's probably can be a, a, a way to solve this problem. And lastly, a generalization is a concern. By generalization, it means that if I train the model with the data of Caucasian people, uh, can I use it on Asian people? That will be a question. So yeah, that's a concern. So here is our, my conclusion. By using AI technologies, the detections of prostate cancers can be done faster and more consistency. And secondly, more than 10 past study using MI and CNN model in prostate cancer detections are compared and provide to be useful in prostate cancer diagnosis. And this is my reference. And thank you for listening to my presentation. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask me. Okay, now, uh, thanks, uh, Ms. Zhen. Um, now, uh, thanks to all the speakers uh, for their wonderful speeches. I think uh, now is the time for you to uh, ask a question. So just please feel free to ask questions, or maybe you can provide us some your comment for our, uh, for our speaker uh, tonight. Any questions? Okay, I have a question. I have a question for this speaker. Uh, I think that now in from in YouTube and uh, the five uh, five hundred Zoom and everybody uh, you transfer in all uh, question for in Zoom 
1,000 I have a question for free speak today. I, I saw three topic very interesting. I'm interested in three topic. Very new. The first, Bitterling. Or inter, I'm interested uh, in tetanol for in you use of MRI for the uh, Crohn's disease. Oh, very interesting. But I ask you, in Vietnam, most, for example, person have a pain, an abdomen pain. Most of they choose the first, they choose the ultrasound, and after that, the CT scanner. I want to ask you, what patient, when patient you move, you, you, you choose for patient, you choose for patient in MRI. I think the in prone disease, you use the MRI very, oh, very good for patient. But I, I ask you, how, how we, we, we for example, before the, you, you choose the MRI, abdomen MRI for prone disease, disease. How, before the, you, you select by, Intrasound or CT scan first. After intrasound or CT scan, you see or patient have a chron. You think you think you not so you thinking the chron that is the this patient. You move to MRI. The first question for Mitterling. I would like to invite the uh, Mitterling answer first. Okay, sure. Um, so, dear moderator and chairman. Um, we choose the MRI to do this program because there are very uh, there are various modi modi uh, modulated roles for full assessment of the small bowel, including um, CTE, it's just a uh, computer tomography, angiography, and ultrasonography, and other auto endoscopy techniques, just like capsule endoscopy and introscopy, but the MI provide a number of advantage over more commercially taken increase for imagery for small ball. And just like superior tissue contrast and lack of ionizing radiation are uh, its major advantage over computer tomography. And the other side, the contrastor enhanced full scopy. So, through more of a dynamic sequence, my, my permit assessment for functional information and improvement visualizing of the entire board. So, restrict my image may also use for patients with the contraindication. So, to do contrast enhanced CT imagery. They including this who are pregnant and they with the large world contraindication to iodinate contrast. So that's why we choose the mind to do this program. So let's all. I hope my answer will be answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. I think the, in your program in today, your topic, your presentation today, I think the all uh, many country want to learn from you. Everyone, I myself, I want to learn from you. Very interesting, very good. I think uh, everybody want to learn. Uh, uh, we, um, everybody can go to in YouTube, YouTube link today. We can learn again because we got the short time. We cannot, not enough time for we, we learn. And I'm also. Your second, thank you, Mr. Ling. The second, the second question uh, for Mr. Chen. Uh, AI for acute is, is chemist. We, we know AI in radiology very important now in five year, in next five year or 10 year, everything change, 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 change. Uh, the first question for you, AI, your AI software is make, uh, you now is make in the entire one, the first. The, the second AI, you your your research, 
you use uh, how many hospital? Mr. Chen, I got a question for Mr. Chen. I, I use more, uh, how many hospitals in, in Taiwan now use the AI software for stroke now? And how long, how long one case for AI diagnosis for, for accurate ischemic stroke? In fact, Mr. Chen. Uh, okay, uh, the first question, uh, how many hospitals use the rapid AI in Taiwan? <clears throat> uh, as I know, uh, only five, only five. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, five, five hospitals use yeah. the rapid AI for the stroke. Mm. Yes. The second, uh, how soon can the rapid AI can uh, calculate the stroke? CT image, uh, about five minutes, five minutes. It's a very short time. Yeah. Most of us very important in your AI, I think they're very important for stroke center or general, or just a neural, neural hospital. Uh, Sorry, I want to ask you. Yes. Is it important, your, your AI sub, Nurse, nurse, nurse hospital or only stock center, or general hospital. Not popular. Not not popular. Not popular. Yeah. It's uh, as I know in in Taiwan, uh, I I just know my hospital used the Raptor. Yes. So let the, the other hospital, I, 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 I don't know, sorry. Yes, yes, I know, I know, I know, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chen. Uh, the last question for Mr. Zing. I have a question uh, for Mr. Zing. Or oh, you use AI for process cancer, the first time I hear. <laughs> Very, I, I like it. Thank but, you. Uh, you. You, your last uh, presentation, you saw some difficult, some difficult understand in your, your some difficult. The now you may be, maybe the now you still in uh, machine learning. Yes. Not yet, not yet in deep, deep, uh, deep learning. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, basically, CN convolutional neural network is one type of deep learning. So this convolutional neural network itself, is a type of deep learning. So yes, it is uh, within the machine learning. Yeah. And yeah, so that's kind of, it's one of them. Yeah. And, and, and for machine learning, it can be separate to many types. And mm. yeah, so it's really complicated. That's why I only chose convolutional neural network for my comparisons, because if I want to extend to many types or, you know, if I really including those, in, for example, segmentations. Well, I will probably won't finish the whole review. Yeah, yeah. so that's a that's a very interesting topic. And yeah, to answer your question, yeah, CNN is one of the deep learning. But difficult, in you 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 tell me difficult. I understand. I understand you. Mm -hmm. Difficult for you. Uh, you saw in many protocol, many mm -hmm. different protocol. How many? You saw in one upon the 2020, you uh, you have four four hundred patients. Mm -hmm. How many hospitals you get some data? Because uh, I ask you, mm -hmm. you make some difficult different protocol in hospital. Some hot, some hospital in different protocol. How you choose in data for clear data? The mm -hmm. first question. The, the second question, process cancer, how you compare with that now in you compare with in uh, diagnosis, radiologist, they have a long time experience and mm. uh, your, your AI, how you compare with and you research, how, how compare to Western you can ask. Uh, can you uh, rephrase the second one, the, the second questions? 
like uh, I didn't really get the second question. Compared, compared with rad, radiologist diagnosis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, well, this is the pretty interesting part because as you can see, I compare 11 papers. Uh, yeah, as you can see in the presentations, I compare 11 papers because I want to know what is the potential, uh, a potential methodologies that I can do. However, uh, in, there is one research which is really interesting in 2020, the latest one. They uh, use, because uh, I, I do believe that many countries have their own guideline, at least for radiologists. They need to uh, have certain uh, images to be able to diagnose uh, the prostate cancer. And for uh, Europe Association Urology, a European Association Urology, and they, they this is that they have to use T1 weighted image, T2 weighted image, uh, uh, the ADC, uh, no, not ADC, uh, the DWI diffusion weighted image, as well as dynamic contrast enhancement MRI. However, in the latest one, the 2021, they tried to compare using all these four types of image, and they compared to using only three types of image and they want to see which one get a better results. Surprisingly, when they only use three of them, they get a better results. So I think that's the most different part when it comes to using AI and clinical, because especially in convolutional neural network, you can't really explain it uh, in a clinical way. So yeah, and that, that's, I, I do believe, I personally believe that that's the part when, when it comes to try to convince other people, I'll just use the AI but they can't really just uh, accept it because it's hard to explain. However, it can be explained uh, mathematically. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, so when it comes to uh, talking to the patients, or oh, you can trust this. Um, however, you can't really just say that. It, you can't just tell them that oh, the, the machines see this, the things in the same way as human beings do. Yeah. So another potential uh, way to solve this problem, because just now I have mentioned, there is a way called um, class ac activation map. So that's a very new thing. Uh, when we use the convolutional neural network, we can implement this and uh, the machine will light up the parts that the convolutional neural network is looking at. So maybe potentially we can use it to, as an explanation that we can use this uh, to explain it. But normally for now, they only just explain the whole process through math. So yeah, that's my opinion. And yeah, I think I pretty much answer your question. <laughs> I hope I answer your question well. <laughs> I'm not very sure, but I hope you, uh, yeah, I hope I answer that question. Yes, I understand. I understand mm. because of AI in the future, uh, I be changed. But yeah. uh, we research to AI, uh, uh, we we will make uh, many many difficult. Mm. We, but we must go. We don't yeah. stop. We don't stop. We must go to AI more AI more 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 more. We make yeah. the many many difficult. Okay. And I think this is a trend mm. as well. So mm. yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Zen. Thank you, Mr. Zen. Thank I you. I in Mr. Lee again. Mr. Lee continue. So thank you, Mr. Lee. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for your question. Um, I just have a, a little bit, uh, a little feedback uh, about Lux the first question to Mr. Lin. I think the radiation dose is the uh, is a very big issue. So in the in in the hospital I work I work for in Taipei, MRE uh, we always uh, do for young people because sure. they have to. Um, for, for, for Kong disease, uh, we always have to follow, to follow, to follow the, the disease again, again. So for young people, the radiation dose, we have to concern. I think this is very important. Sure. This is just, this is just um, my, 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 little, uh, my little feedback. Sure. Okay, um, for Mr. Ling, I have another, another question. I think in my opinion, um, Bascoba administration is, I think, is necessary in MRE examination. 
And it is this also list in many references uh, in some papers is even suggests that the bus carbon should be used twice in different time phase. So how do you think about this? And what is your opinion? Okay, sure. Uh, dear Chairman, well, I'm sorry to say sorry for to you first because I'm afraid I didn't explain that clearly in my presentation. So the first chance of the bus coupon to be administered is when we confirm the oral high osmotic pressure for it is completed, uh, feel with the interesting. And the second point in time is before the dynamic sequence trip is performed. So the time before between the uh, two point will be about 15 minutes or more. So by the way, the patient must be confirmed to have glaucoma or benign prostate hyperplasia before administrating the bascopan. So because bascopan can use excitive, excessive eye pressure or the increasing form of grand hypertrophy. So some invisible condition occurs. So does the answer your question? I hope my answer will be answer for you as well. Okay, thank you. So any other question? Yes, I have a question. Sure. Please. Okay, my question is about the second speakers, Mr. Change talk about the stroke in Taiwan to use a rapid software. Yes. As yes. I know, the rapid software is very common to use in the US and the Euro. But yeah. I want to know about the protocol for the for the stroke patient in your hospital. Oh, our, our protocol. Yes. Non-contrast or have a contrast? No, so the patient when you suspect the stroke can come from the oh, right. Uh, and then the patient will yeah, be right. in your department. And then we will CT scan, pen yeah. scan, contract. What about that protocol? Oh, they come uh, come our hospital. First, uh, we the test, uh, we do the non contrast CT first, then put the image to wrap the server. Then the raptor will calculate to uh to calculate the CT image. Then we show we uh, the brain where is stroke. No, I mean the protocol so the patients for the rapid can analyze. You must be do the brain scan, the CTA, the perfusion, mm -hmm. and what? Because before you are mentioning it, I saw is the point about the perfusion. So the older patient when they suspect the stroke, you must do the perfusion in your hospital, right? All right. Okay. So when you do the when the patients come from the brain scan. And then you see the air moorage. So the so the, the calculator will be stopped there. Okay, when the brain scan is a, is, is a negative, so you will do the CTA and the perfusion, right? Right. So the rapid will be used the three phase of for the calculator. The first is the brain scan, and then the perfusions, and the last is the CTA, right? Right. So before because uh, before I have uh, uh, the, the rapid software represent in Macau to, to, to come to my hospital because we we will care about the radiations for the patient to do the perfusions nowadays. So our hospital radiologists don't like the patient to do the perfusion, just only the CT is enough or the, and then or the MRI for the for the uh, uh, the PWI like that. So, because the so the question is the the patient must be do the perfusions for the rapid software, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just to know the about the patients must be do the CTA and the CT perfusions. Yeah, in in our hospital, when a stroke patient to the emergency, uh, the must do the non conscious CT and the contrast CTA and perfusion okay. need to do the all. Okay. 
because it's the, it's the same, it's the different. Just only, I want to know about the other hospital like you. In my hospital, we never do the perfusion mm -hmm. nowadays because the oh. radiation is too high. But the, the neurologists mm -hmm. and the radiologists, they don't have a rapid software like you, but they can decide what is the process we do. We, we can decide if we can decide the patient need to do CT or not. Uh, just doctor decide that. So we just do. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Because, you, because uh, the, the nowadays we have, uh, we have, we have uh, uh, the user ML perfusions because the radiation. Yeah. Except you use a CT perfusion. Mostly the CT perfusion is most rapid because the patient man will send to the department and they will do the prepare, prepare the patients and then do the PET scan and then the contracts and the contract with, with the two, two phase, the CTA and the perfusion. So more faster. Okay, thank you very much. No, no more questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think the for uh, stroke patient uh, in Taiwan, I think um, uh, multi uh, phase multi uh, CTA is most popular in Taiwan now. Yes, yes, I yeah, know, but Macau also have a CT scanner with the multi phase software, but they don't like to use, just only to use a CTA enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Between the radiologists and the neurologists, different countries, right? Yeah. Okay, um, any question? Any other question? Okay, I, I, ju yeah. I just have one question for, for Mr. Chen. I think, um, uh, as we know, I think uh, Rapid is a pay to use software. So it's compared to the uh, post post station software like the, uh, of the uh, instrument itself. So what, uh, what are the, uh, what are the advantages, uh, advantages? Uh, okay, it used a time to process the data, including the city perfusion. It needs someone to do the primary process. Also, 3D city in uh, 3D CTA image process CTA image by city workstation to calculate time for the server blood flow, as well as the time need for doctor to provide layer determination. Uh, layer are all time consuming task. Not to mention that the time for communication should also be taken into consideration. Uh, the Raptor takes only five minutes or even short time for the time of the completely the exam for patient to automatically send to the server and the completely the imaging analysis. The analysis without loop they will be delivered to the doctor who is on call due by email or real time and can support the doctor for their in, uh, initial judgment or the positive the embolizing. So could save time and be more different. We cannot we, we, we cannot is uh, how long it will take from the a patient being taken to the hospital. So that we, uh, he, but it's for sure that the short time we take the better for the patient treatment and uh, prognosis. So uh, it, uh, the, the raptor will, make a uh, short time for give the doctor primary judgment. That's his, uh, that's the raptor advantage. Okay, I see. Another very important question is, so the, the patient, the patient should pay, should pay the, the, the rabbit mm -hmm. by themselves? And no, 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 no. no. So who, who paid that, it? Uh, hospital. That, that, that's free. Yeah, right. That's, okay, that's okay. free. Okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah, that's free. Okay, <laughs> okay uh, any other okay. questions? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, question. Yeah, from me. 
Yeah, first of all, for Mr. Yu Wan Lian, how to, to uh, reduce the artifact for, for uh, MRI in abdomen, especially for uh, Crohn, Crohn disease? And then the, uh, for the second presentation, Mr. Chen, yeah. Uh, what actually the the gold standard for the gold standard uh, to determine uh, sensitivity and uh, specificity in uh, LVO AI? Okay, you, you can catch Mr. Lee. Sorry, can you repeat your question because I have the uh, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so how to reduce? the uh, artifacts yeah especially in uh, abdomen abdomen mri uh, in in Crohn disease this is uh, for your for you uh, for, for you mr lin and then for mr chen what is the the gold standard yeah the gold standard to determine uh, sensitivity and specificity in uh, lvo the, I think yeah. the LVO one is not from me. Uh, it's uh, Mr. Chen, I think the second second person there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, go stand up, right? Okay. 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 So maybe Mr. Lin for for, for oh, uh, transcription. Excuse me. Okay. Yo, okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, we usually we were we were let the patient let she hold the breathing and we were also use the basco pump to and use the two phase of sequence to to obtain our abdominal imagery. So. This is all, all program sequence. So, so yeah, it's just a single breath or something. I think that. Yeah. Yeah, just that's all. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry. I think uh, there are there are different different way to do uh, MRI or Crohn disease uh, examination. So um, in the hospital I work for, we will do the MRE. Uh, we we used to um, dynamic scanning, scanning T two, scanning scanning T two T two image, two face, okay. or maybe maybe uh, for for Philip uh, uh, T F F E. Uh, this okay. sequence. So we will make a dynamic image for, for and then the, so so the patient in in the hospital I for we will free breathing, free okay. breathing and, it, yeah. and it take take a series, a series of dynamic image so we can see how uh, how the how the how the interest in the, the, the motion, so we can we can to to make sure. Um, what's wrong and and, and what's, what's area have something 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 wrong and something uh, something we have to check 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 more detail. So this is in a hospital. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. The second the second yeah. question for uh, what's for Mr. Chen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, the LOVO, the gold standard, uh, is by by the enter result is determined by the senior radiologist. So the gold, uh, the gold standard. Because my research is the retrospective study, so we know the result. Okay. So the expectation from the senior radiologist, yeah. Yeah, senior okay. radiologist. Okay, right. okay. Okay, all right. Thank you. Really a lot of questions from chat box. Oliver, have it, we look at chat box. 
So, any other question? Many guys get them from the chat box, Italy. May I ask one question for the third speaker? About okay, please. Prostate cancer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm Nelson from Hong Kong. Actually, I just want to know much about the arrangement in Taiwan. If in case the MRI, uh, the prostate, you mean the CNM software, and, and confirm the patient is highly suspicious of the prostate cancer, will it, the, the patient will be arranged for the biopsy to reconfirm the, the, the cell is, is malignant or benign or what else? I just want to know more about that, or just just pass the case if if it is a uh, confirmed already in MRI and then pass to the oncologist for the treatment. Okay, yeah. So honestly, I uh, seldom practice in Taiwan. <laughs> I oh. did this, yeah. I did this review when I was in Scotland. Um, personally, uh, I don't really think they started to use this technique clinically mm -hmm. because, um, well, you have to every every types of software and especially for artificial intelligence, this kind of software, it needs to be approved by FDA or it needs to be approved followed by certain regulations that the government have. So it really started to be used um, and uh, the, the company who provide this service have to pass this mm. or otherwise it have to be used uh, as the research purposes. Um, so, which means that we won't really take this as the, the standard that we, or just, we just take the results. I don't think they do this as well. They will always refer to the patient, or the patient suspects to have prostate cancer. Uh, I do believe that they would just let the patient do the biopsy. But mm -hmm. there's a possibility in the future that if we really have this technique and it's been approved by government, as I just mentioned, uh, we can really fasten the, the whole process the patient probably won't really wait for that long to be able to be tested. And yeah, you can get an instant results from this and that will be good for everyone, like from the hospital side as well as the patient side. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Immediately, you, 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 you see in chest box a lot of Western form of Oliver. So have any other question? You look in what you look in the uh, uh, chat box, a lot of questions from Oliver, Italy. Okay, okay, I see. Okay, so we have a, a question from our audience. So, and the question is, uh, whether only box clone injection for re Reduce activated or required fasting or abating the in, in intestine for for period for period preparation. Okay, so uh, Mr. Ling. Sorry. <laughs> Can you I, see. You, you I, I, I didn't I, I didn't see it just time. Sorry, can you repeat your question, Chairman? Okay. Uh, so I think, I think, I think, I think the correction has, has been so, 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 so long. Okay. Okay, it's okay. No problem. So uh, have any other question for our speaker? Okay, I think uh, this is an excellent opportunity for our member to have experience in international affairs. And this also provided a good platform in clinical experience exchange. So I think uh, we wish uh, this platform could be continue and uh, we will still join and uh, uh, contribute for this. Um, okay, so uh, before the end of this meeting, so I think we would like to invite uh, President Du uh, uh, Du Junyuan to make a uh, brief uh, summary of the meeting tonight. Okay, I believe uh, that all of you uh, have well done through the discussion. Uh, finally, on behalf of the TMRT, I would like to express 
my appreciation to all of the participants uh, for taking time out of the busy duties to attending this seminar. And I would like to close my remark and uh, official announce the end of the, this seminar. And thank you. Thank you. Next, BG, BG, introduce something. Introduce, introduce some. Next, BG. Yeah, so again, thank you very much, uh, President uh, Chun Yuan Tu and the CPD program moderator Chang Wei Li. In closing, please welcome President Wan Xiubu Nelson of Hong Kong Radiographers Association, HKRA, for his message and invitations. Thank you, Pichi. And I'm Nelson from Hong Kong, and um, thank you to JMRT for giving us a very fruitful light. And I can say the next event will be hosted by Hong Kong, and the date is 23rd of May, and the time is 4 p.m. Hong Kong. Please mark it down and hope to see you all again. So stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you very much. Mute. Is your mic is muted? Oh yeah. Thank you very much again, uh, President uh, Wan Shu uh, Nelson. Uh, Mark your calendar now and register soon to attend the fifth CPD Asia on May 23. Please take note also that the Vietnam Association of Radiologic Technologists will host the online CPD Asia in conjunction with the seventh Southeast Asia Radiographers Conference on June 27, 2021. And this year's theme of the conference is AI, artificial intelligence, and new technologies in radiology. Again, from all of us, with all the participating presidents, we thank you, VT Healthcare Vietnam and Bayer Vietnam. We thank everybody for the active participation and congratulations to TAMRT and President Chun Yuan Tu. We hope to meet you all again in the fifth online CPD platform for Asian Radiologic Technology Societies. Good night, everybody, and thank you. Okay, thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, night. Good night. See you next month. Good night. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very well. Maybe take picture together. Take picture together. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. First picture. Now the second picture. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you, President. Thank you, Presidents. Thank you, Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye